So over the past couple of weeks, I've been doing something that, frankly, I never thought I would be doing. At least not in this lifetime, anyway. I've been working my way through the Final Fantasy XV DLC, which, just saying that, oof, kind of sends shivers down my spine. Because for any of y'all who are familiar with the channel, you would know that Final Fantasy XV and I... What's the best way to describe our relationship? Oh, one-sided hatred? I guess that's the term we'll use for today. Without getting into any specifics on my particular distaste for XV, I'll just say that in the entire celebrated history of Final Fantasy... This was not one of my favorites. It's actually really down low on the list. But if you want to get my full thoughts and analyses, I'll have links down below in the video description for you to watch at your leisure. That being said, I've always gotten questions throughout the years since this game has been out. We're going on the four-year anniversary this November. People have asked me if I've ever played the DLC. And to that, I said, I already spent way too much money on the game the first time. There's no way in hell... I'll go out there to spend money on it again, especially for them to fix the overall story. That's been my mantra for the past couple of years, and recently, since I've gotten back into doing live streams, that question has come up again. And I, you know, threw a bone in my subscribers. I said, you know what? I'll play the Final Fantasy XV DLC if y'all gonna go ahead and pay for it. I, I should really keep my mouth shut more often because <laughs> it's definitely a case of I put my foot in my mouth. One person by the name of Asbel Lant, shout out to you and shout out to all my Tales fandom, my Tales brethren. He said, you know what, Neil, I'm going to donate for you to play. And then here's a little extra on top of that. And me being a man of my word, who was I to disagree? So for the past couple of weeks, I've been working my way through the four DLC stories they released. Episode Gladio. Episode Prompto, Episode Ignis, and one of which, which was part of a second wave of DLC, a second pass, Episode Arden. So today, I wanted to just give you all my thoughts on playing through all of these games. If you want to check out the individual streams, I'll have links down below to my second channel, or if you want to watch it with the live playback of the comments, my Twitch channel as well. So in order for me to really illustrate... Um, the, the DLCs themselves, I need to explain to y'all why the DLCs exist in this capacity. So as many of y'all know, whenever a company comes out with some type of a story DLC, it's usually to include new content. So it'd be maybe like a side story of things happening in the middle of the game, or maybe a prequel or something that happens after the game. Final Fantasy 15 story DLC was literally to fill in the gaps for a story that did not exist. Without getting into too many specifics, Final Fantasy XV's story was a... Okay, I'm just going to come out and say it was, it was a hot mess. It was a hot mess split up between a mediocre movie, poorly animated short segments, and then there was just a whole chunk of the story that just did not exist in the game. Amongst all of that, one of the biggest sins of Final Fantasy XV was the fact that they didn't give you any development whatsoever for characters... There were certain scenes where characters would show up and then later on they show up completely different and you're left scratching your head why. Some characters would show up for one scene and then they're dead in the next. All of that stuff would be going on. And the worst, the cardinal sin behind it was that they expected you to care. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not that easily swayed. For me, if you expect me to care, you have to build up to it. You have to make it satisfying. It must be earned. And that's something that Final Fantasy XV didn't do. It was just all over the place. So that's what this DLC is attempting to rectify. It's attempting to explain where characters were at certain points in the game. So I worked my way through it chronologically, if you will. I started off with episode Gladio. And... Boy, was that not fun. Y'all can go ahead and watch my um, Twitch stream and my YouTubes down below to see just the quality of the game. It was not very good at all. It, it wasn't. Again, it goes back to one of my issues with Final Fantasy XV. The fact that the combat is literally just a button masher. Very rarely do you have to use any type of strategy 
it's literally just a case of, you know what, lock on, just mash the B button or the O button, whichever platform you're on. I played this on Xbox One X, and it was just not a lot of fun. We went through that entire DLC, and we learned tidbits about the character of Gladio and how he was supposed to, it was supposed to explain his resolve in the game. All of that stuff, right? Now, here's the thing. This is all well and good, but something like this could have easily been a separate side mission where you can control Gladio in the main game, like they used to do in classic RPGs back in the day. There would be times where your party would be split up, and then you would play as each of those individual party members. And along those individual journeys, they learn something about themselves, and then they all come together, and it's just, it feels organic and genuine. This felt so disjointed. It really did. And couple that with the fact that not just this DLC, but all the DLCs are completable in two hours or less. It doesn't bode well if the fact that all you're getting is just something expected and something that should have been in the game, and it's short. Not that great of a sell. So we move on to episode Prompto, right? Prompto was actually one of my highlights for Final Fantasy XV. I thought that he was a great character because I, I like really like bubbly, bolsterous type of like good spirited, good feeling, good will. You know, like the light in the room just brings energy. That type of person. I, I loved Prompto. He was great. I loved him when he was taking the the the. I called them the Prompto uh, shots. They were great. I loved him. His DLC was arguably the worst. Because they tried mixing in different type of mechanics, and the AI was just so gosh darn broken. It was insane. Again, there are going to be links down below if you want to watch the streams. The AI is terrible. It's piss poor. It's like I was playing, let's just say, Alpha Protocol or any of those other really bad games from the previous generation. And I'm not just exaggerating here to make a point. I mean, why? I would just come on here and say all oh, this DLC sucks. No. Episode Prompto was just a technical disaster. Technical disaster. And it wasn't salvaged by some of the story beats that were included. So, so far we have Episode Gladio and Episode Prompto. Both of which, like I said, you have certain things about the characters you learn. They aren't great to play. They really aren't. They're not fun. They're not enjoyable. They're not entertaining. And in the case of this... They're trying to create these characters with completely different play styles from Noctis, which is fine. I actually do appreciate that if you were going to be able to place four different characters. But the combat is just so unrefined as is that they try to experiment and do other things. It, it just does not work out well at all. It doesn't. To the point where it's just like, ugh, God, I, I wouldn't even mind if all these guys had some type of a sword and they were able to do stuff. It's very bad. Not only that, but visually... They look atrocious. And like I said, I'm playing on Xbox One X. You know, I'm playing at like the highest graphical fidelity available on consoles. And these games look very muddy and somehow look worse than the original Final Fantasy XV. Which is very unlike Square because they're usually all about raising the bar and quality for all of their um, first party titles. However, then we move into Episode Ignis. Right? Episode Ignis is like a night and day difference. In every type of capacity. First things first. From a visual standpoint. In terms of performance. Oh my god. This game. It's it's literally. I'm not even joking with y'all. This is what Final Fantasy 15 should have been. Like when we saw the original trailers for um, 15 at E3 2013. How they showed that off. This was more indicative of that type of quality. You know just in terms of visuals. And just in terms of the way the game runs. It's great. Couple that with the fact that the gameplay is more refined. It feels so smooth. Controlling Ignis. Ignis is a freaking beast, man. I was wondering to myself, yo, where was this Ignis when I was playing the game? It was just, he was unrecognizable. And the gameplay was a lot of fun. They started to introduce some different elements. I don't know the exact term for this, but you know how you play the Musou games and you have to go and control particular territories before the enemy takes them? Things like that. Um, Like when you play some type of tower defense sort of games, they have those type of things. That was the basic gist of um, episode Ignis. You would go ahead and you would do that. And every now and then you'll get some type of uh, important story beat uh, mixed in with certain characters you saw in the game. 
Um, so from a gameplay standpoint, it's not that great. I mean, it's so much better than Episode Prompto and Gladio because uh, it's more entertaining and engaging. And when you have a character that's as fun to play as is Ignis, even though he's straight up God mode and there's no challenge whatsoever, you know, it's still a much better experience to play as him, even though it's not challenging, if that makes sense. So I was going through it and then something happened. They started going heavy with the story beats and I start seeing what the original vision of FF15 was supposed to be. Not only was I getting background for a lot of the things that happened at that point in the game in addition to stuff that happened later on, but they started doing something weird. There's a particular point which I'm not really going to I'm going to try my best not to get into spoilers, but there's a particular point where you're playing as Ignis and you have a choice that exists. A choice that can alter a lot of the stuff that happens in the story. Some stuff that would have happened later on happens earlier and then it potentially creates an alternate timeline. Now, I know it, it's kind of par for the course right now when it comes to Square Enix and doing crazy things, but to me, it was just so like, whoa, what is going on? Because already I was surprised at the fact that I was really enjoying the story with Ignis and just his resolve and his devotion to the prince Noctis and everything surrounding him that I was I was legit getting. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. You guys can watch my stream. I was getting emotional. I was getting attached to Ignis. I was wondering, yo, where's the game starring Ignis? This guy is great, right? And then after that, they have this whole other section where if you didn't pick a particular choice, you can play the other choice later. But before all that, they play you in the credits, the cutscenes of things that happen and leading into that particular moment in Final Fantasy 15. I legit felt like weeping for Ignis and his relationship. And for the first time, for the very first time since this game has existed, I felt for these characters. I really did. I felt like they were brothers because they actually showed us scenes that developed the characters, which is all I ever asked for. That's all I ever asked for. In addition to all the other things about the games, I wanted this story of brotherhood that they were trying to sell us. And we never got. Episode Ignis showed me that. And it was amazing. Simply incredible. But it did not stop there. Like I mentioned, there was that particular story where it diverges. You get to play that section and see what it's all about. And then, again, not getting into spoilers, it starts getting really trippy. Really trippy. Which I might actually do a whole separate video on because that in and of itself is insane. But when I saw that, I was like, dude, what are they planning? Seriously. Okay? So that was the end of the first batch of Season Pass content, at least for the stories anyway. They, they added in some multiplayer stuff and all that other junk. Then we moved into a second wave of DLC, which was the second Season Pass, which again followed along the same lines of them trying to give more development for these characters. This next episode was titled Episode Arden, which is giving you backstory on the main villain of the game. Now, here's the thing about Final Fantasy XV, right? I might not like a lot of things about the game. I might dislike the fact that there is no development whatsoever. But something that is true is that the character of Arden, even though we barely knew anything about him, there was something about his character that was unsettling, off-putting. There's just something about this dude. Like, this dude knows a lot more than what he's leading on. Like, this dude is just genuinely cool. He really is. And I always wondered, like, why people were saying that, yo, Arden is legit one of the best Final Fantasy villains. He's one of the best Final Fantasy villains. Because when I played Final Fantasy XV, I didn't see that at all. I saw a really cool dude that didn't have his potential unlocked. And then I played Episode Arden. 
and I started to see it, man. In terms of um, gameplay-wise, again, it suffers from a lot of the problems that Final Fantasy XV's DLCs and just in general the base game suffer. It's way too easy. There's not a lot of fun. It brings back that like tower defense sort of thing where you have to go to objectives and do certain things. They have like these mini boss fights, which again would be fun if they were worth a damn, if they had any challenge attached to them. So I can say, honestly, playing in episode Arden wasn't as fun as episode Ignis. And granted, like a lot of the stuff that you play in the beginning portion is just kind of like it feels fillery. It's just walking around and you can go and read stuff in the lab. You know, things that honestly should have been explained in the entire game story because there's some really interesting stuff that's there. But again, they just didn't explain it. Which, like I said before, is a problem with the overall Final Fantasy XV experience. So I can't fault Arden's DLC per se. But when you get into the final act of the game, and it starts ramping up, and all the stuff that's going on there, it's very enjoyable. Very entertaining. And again, like with episode Ignis, I started seeing more of the story beats about the characters. And I was invested, I was engaged, I was like... Where was this in 2016? Where was this? Is this what they were planning the whole time? Because if they were able to incorporate everything, if it was the perfect type of game, Final Fantasy XV might have gone down as like the best Final Fantasy game. And then it ends off in a similar situation, episode Ignis, where there's some things that happen that allude to an alternate timeline of sorts. And that's it. It ends right there. It ends before it even began because episode Arden, before it even released, was canceled because Hajime Tibata, who was the director of 15 for the latter half, in addition to just overseeing a lot of the stuff with 15, uh, left Square Enix to do something else. And after that, there was really no direction with the company. uh, So they just decided to scrap the rest of the DLCs, which would have starred uh, other characters such as Noctis and uh, Luna Freya and... uh, uh, Arania, I believe that's what her name is, someone who was close to um, Arden. And it would lead up into this whole different alternate. Again, I'll save, I might save that for another video. If you guys want to hear my thoughts on it, comment down below. Um, but they were leading into something different, which just looking at the DLC as a whole, now that we have the four episodes, episode Gladio, piece of crap. I'm, I'm sorry. Episode Prompto, absolute gutter trash. I'm sorry. Episode Ignis and episode Arden. Those right there, not only did they make me appreciate 15 more, but it got me excited for whatever they were, what they had cooked up for the future. So, this is going to be weird to say, but I'm actually kind of sad that we didn't get to see where all this was leading up to. Because if there's one thing I'll give 15, even though I like to crack jokes about them, they were dedicated to what they were doing with this particular vision. Now, it remains to be seen if it would have worked out in the end. That's still up in the air, and we'll honestly never be able to see that. I know they have something else coming out, which is related to it, um, but it's not a video game. It's actually a novel. Um, I will give them that they had the passion to go there and actually say, hey, you know what? We're going to continue doing stuff. But looking at it as a whole, I actually feel even more regret playing the DLC. Because it would be one thing if I just left that experience with Final Fantasy VI, XV You know, in the back of my mind, you know, it wasn't a great game. But when I played the last two DLC episodes, I started to see the workings of a great game. And if they had whoever they worked on doing the story for the DLCs, if they had that person leading the charge from the very beginning, this game could have been amazing. It could have been incredible. And on some level, I kind of do wish that 10 years down the road, Square Enix revisits Final Fantasy XV and they give us maybe that vision of the game. Because Final Fantasy XV has a lot of stuff. Like, the story of Final Fantasy XV is just... Honestly, I feel like it's too vast for one game. Because what I was playing in Episode Arden, I felt like could have been his own prequel standalone thing. Because there's a lot of stuff to develop for a villain. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. He could have had his own game. He honestly could have, right? It just kind of sucks because the way they went about developing XV... I don't know if there was too many cooks in the kitchen... Or just the overall management was screwed up. I'm kind of leaning towards the latter because it's Square Enix. Uh, They didn't really start getting their shit together until this generation. Um, But, yeah, it just just really is disappointing because 
I'm starting to see what could have been. It kind of gave me flashbacks to the original vision of Versus 13, which I know is, is very different by comparison to 15 and then what 15 ended up becoming. But just that type of like epic scale and scope of a story that spans generations with all these characters, man, it's definitely a case of what could have been. But yeah, guys, that was my um, review, recap, discussion of the Final Fantasy 15 DLC, all four episodes. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that I did play them, if only for episode Ignis and episode Arden, because I got so much enjoyment out of them. Episode Gladio and episode Prompto, though, <laughs> them shits can go in the trash. Uh, but the other two were very good, and I will always say, I will give credit where credit is due. So if there's a game that I think sucks, but they come out with something good, I will applaud them for it. Likewise, if there's a game that I think is amazing and they come out with something that's very bad, I will, again, divert that same energy over there. But yeah, shout out to um, Asbel Launt for the donation for playing the game, man. I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun with it. I really hope you had fun watching me stream that too. And like I said, all the links are going to be down below in the video description for you to watch all of uh, the Twitch streams for the games in addition to our newly created Discord community. So yeah, for me to you for now, guys, my name is NGS signing out. And like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.